Hello everyone and welcome back to Bitwig Studio and Music Production. This is lesson 5.53 and in this lesson we're going to talk about the amplitude envelope. Sometimes I say envelope, sometimes I say envelope. I'm not really sure how I grew up saying both ways, but uh, either way I'm referring to the exact same thing. When you look at a synthesizer, especially a subtractive one like this, and you load up like the initialized patch, the actual initialized patch, it can be a little bit confusing. So let's just load it up here. So I load this up and this is the initialized patch. And I'm looking at this thing and to the untrained ear, you're thinking this is just a static sound. Yet I'm looking at it and there's so much crap going on in here what's actually happening. And what we have to do with a subtractive synthesizer is really break it down to its component parts. So although what I'm covering is kind of review to what I've talked about before in a lot of these videos, it is important for us to actually fully understand each and every turn we're making and how that's, at least in theory, going to impact our, um, our waveform. And that's why I've resampled out just a saw wave here because I'm gonna actually be able to explain all of these concepts in such a better visual way by showing you this and actually making my own amplitude envelopes inside of the audio clip itself. We also have a couple of additional synthesizers that I'm gonna show you that actually kind of approach at least the way the look um, of these controls is a little bit different, but that's great because it's gonna show you that we get the same results regardless of what it looks like. So let's start by creating a gate message here. I'm going to just turn off this um, envelope generator here for our filter. Just pull all that down so we're not messing with it. Pull my filter frequency all the way up, get rid of the resonance. And now let's take a listen to our sound. And you can watch that when I let go, we're getting a little bit extra on the end. So that's letting me know that my release is activated. And release is just how long the signal takes to get down to zero, because all sounds have to pretty much start to a point where we can't hear them negative infinity up to their maximum, which we'll say is one. We can keep this all relative, and this synthesizer uses percentages. So we can always imagine zero percent to 100 percent. So if this is cranked way up, I'm obviously not holding a note, and it's taking quite a bit of time to get back to zero. What I'm gonna do is pull this right down. So now when I click and I let go, we immediately shut off. And I'm just gonna put this into monophonic mode as well. All right, now there's a little bit of an attack time on here, but it's basically inaudible. And attack is the amount of time it takes for us to go from that negative infinity up until our relative maximum point, which we set here at the output level. And then decay is just the amount of time it takes for us to go from the maximum level to our sustain point. And if that doesn't make any sense, I'm going to show it to you guys here on our uh, little waveform. So right now we basically have a gate, but it doesn't really look like a gate uh, per se because we don't have any points here. So this first point is going to be always what I refer to as my, let's start it at zero before we can't hear anything. And the second point is the attack time. So if my attack time is zero, I'm just gonna load it right up on top so that we hear it, the sound right away. There's no fade in, it just is triggering right from the start. And now at the end, okay, obviously this is where this cut off, so we'll go here. This is gonna be my point of zero at the end of the sound. So always this is gonna be pulled right down and we can see now we have just a fade out. So this would be as if we had our setting like this. If I'm smart enough to turn it on. And we'll hear quite a similar result. Right now, if I don't want any release at all, I'm just going to add my second point and pull this up to zero. So now you can imagine that we have four points here. And if only this would go right to zero, that would make life a little bit easier. If 
pretend like that's zero, we could see that this is a full-blown gate message. Okay, so I just am trying to pull this out properly without it looping. And we can see that that's our gate. And we could imagine that the sound continues on. All right, but if we wanted to add attack to this sound, and we're going to pretend like the zero is our maximum point, I could fade this in a ways. And now we start to have a fade into the sound. But still that release of zero. Now here's where the amplitude envelope gets confusing for people, the decay and the sustain. So if I walk you through what ADSR stands for, it stands for attack time. So this length of time here, okay, we have decay time, and then we have sustain level. So this next point that I make can either control specifically the decay time, or it can set the decay time and the sustain level. Meaning that if I pull this all the way down to zero, and we don't have this extra point here, we don't have any release set either, this is an attack and decay envelope. Now, if there's no release, let's say that I stop holding down my note here, okay? What happens is with no release, it just cuts off from that point. And we can emulate that now inside the polysynth, okay? So we have zero release, we don't have any sustain, we just have some decay. So if I hold this down, If I hold down for long enough, it lets me get back to zero. But if I don't hold down long enough, it just cuts off. All right. And we'll pretend now like we played this note all the way through. Maybe make it a little bit longer. And I forgot to add the attack portion here to the sound. So we'll go back. And there you go, like so, very simple. Now, if I don't want my sound to just cut off after I've played it all the way through, I can also add in a sustain level, which in, in hypothetically would last forever, okay, until we actually let go of the key. So I could pull this up and pull this up to match it until we want to hit our release stage. So we'll say this is like, let's not go that extreme with it. minus 11 and then hopefully I can match this to be minus 11 as well so now what we have happening is a de attack stage a decay stage and then an infinite um, sustain level if we play this back we'll hear that but it will cut off eventually because of the sample length and I can emulate that in the polysynth very easily also by going in and just setting a sustain level. And then choosing to just never let go. So the last portion here, if you want it, is a release stage, which will then set our signal back down to zero based on how long we set that release. And we'll say we don't want it to be super long, but this is what it sounds like. So attack, decay, sustain for how long you're holding the key and then when you let go of the key the release so that's a pretty fast moving envelope let's see if we can kind of replicate that the sustain level needs to be much higher so that we stay relatively close to that max value and if I just turn the synthesizer down a bit, we have basically the exact same thing as this. Only the sustains a bit longer. Just like that, okay? So it's really not that complicated. It's actually very, very simple. And we can see by looking at this, we have an actual visual representation of what's happening. Inside of the polysynth, we just have knobs. And so it's assumed that you know exactly what each of these stages looks like and what's happening there. 
Now, one thing to be very aware of is the kind of exponential nature, and this is true with like almost any synthesizer, of these particular knobs. Okay, so you have great control at the bottom here. But the higher we go, like the exponentially longer the envelope to the point where when we're at the top, it will take like 25 or 30 seconds to completely end this envelope. But when we're at the 50% point, for example, it doesn't take 15 seconds, it goes really quick. So keep that in mind. And this is true for all of these knobs here. Okay, so when you're making your sounds, you need to be very, very aware of that. If you need something really long, you're gonna have to go up to like 65, 70. But then when you get to this point, when you go from 70 to 71%, that could be an additional like three seconds. There's no way of us figuring that out at this point. If we really wanted to, we could. But just be aware of that, and that's true for everything, um, minus the sustain level, which is just like the percentage based off of what our output is set at. So if we're at 100%, right, the decay is not even doing anything because we're just playing back this. That's why when you make a gate message, you just get rid of the decay because it's not ha having any effect at all. But the second I even pull this down a little bit, it does start to have an impact. So I wanted to show you how in something like Massive, which I think is a really good teaching synth and not a particularly great synthesizer, we have our envelopes here, and these envelopes actually do give you a great visual representation of what's happening to the sound. So let's turn this one on. So we can see that right now we have a bit of an attack. I could pull that back if I wanted to not have any attack at all. And then from that attack stage, we have a pretty long decay. So we could shorten that up to like no decay at all or a really, really long decay. And again, this is gonna be like exponential. So very short decay. You basically can't even hear it to our sustain level right here. Okay, so this is a pretty important knob depending on how we set that decay. So if I wanna come up with like a simple gate message, I'll pull my sustain all the way up. And then I'll pull my release back. And just like that, we have our standard gate message. Now, it doesn't look like it because there's still this emphasis on the attack, but that's just because we haven't set any decay time. If I pull the decay all the way up, it will actually look more like a gate. But this and this are exactly the same, at least sonically, when we listen back. But the second I start to pull here and up here, I could again try to emulate a if I want to get more of a pluck. All right, very, very simple. So Massive has these actual visual cues for you, which the polysynth doesn't. And then what you also might see is something like this. Okay, this is a free synthesizer by Yuhi. Uh, I have no idea what this default setting is. I don't really use this guy that often. Let's take a quick listen. And this is telling me that the VCA, AKA the Voltage Controlled Amplifier, is synced up with ADSR1. So this is ADSR1, as far as I know. We'll just have oscillator one playing in here. Go 
up an octave. Perfect, and now I can control the ADSR here. Now these are giving me vertical sliders, but it's basically the same as our knobs. If I just want my gate, I have that standard gate if I want to add some release. And if we watch the yellow dot, like so, obviously we have some detune on. And then I also have control over that decay stage, which has no impact unless the sustain is turned down. Maybe we'll increase the attack. So now we have more of like a pad type sound here. And I could play chords and turn on the chorus if I wanted. So something like that. So just the smallest little changes to what seems like a pretty insignificant portion of the synthesizer actually makes a really large impact. So I am sorry if that seemed like uh, I was really talking down to you in that video. I find this to be very profound and very interesting. And the trick is whenever you get a new synthesizer, if it's a subtractive synth to find this and figure out how exactly these knobs are working and once you really get good at a synthesizer you'll know okay if I put my decay to 92 percent I can expect this kind of length on it that's what takes the longest part to figure out so jump in there start out with something default figure out how many different timbres you can come up with and it's remarkable because if we increase the attack and the release time all the way up and then just tap a key Wrong synthesizer. We could be going on forever, right? As compared to if we set these both to like 50%. So a massive difference. Hope that was helpful for you guys. Feel free to mess around with that. And you'll hear from me again in the next lesson. Take care.